So a little while back, I got this. This is a Gibson Les Paul Special loaded with two P90 pickups in TV yellow. It smells immaculate, <laughs> but do I regret buying it a couple of weeks after the fact? Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. I thought I'd do a little bit of a review slash follow up video on this because I only really did a first impressions video. Although I did play to some backing tracks on that, I thought I'd follow it up with a bit more of a deep dive on this guitar. Now this is the Gibson Les Paul Special. This is the current 2021 and it's in this beautiful TV yellow which I think looks really cool. And yeah, it's got a big fat neck, it's got the binding and all the kind of stuff that I like on a guitar and it's loaded with two P90 pickups which are single coil pickups and I think it sounds unreal. So buyer's remorse can be a pretty serious thing. I know I've been there and done that a whole bunch of times with guitars and amps. You get them home and you think, oh, I'm all hyped up. The next day you're like, what have I done? <laughs> you know, I've done that with other stuff as well. But uh, I gotta tell you, there's absolutely no buyer's remorse with this thing. I'm loving it. And I hadn't played it for about a week. And I picked it up just before to make this video and I smiled about just how light it actually is. So that's one of the redeeming factors of this particular Les Paul. Over a lot of other ones is it's very, very light. Now, being that it's got the single coil pickups, you do get the noise. And back in the day, I used to sort of stay away from P90 pickups because I used to play in a lot of venues where we get these trams going past the venue, which are kind of like rail cars if you live overseas or rail carts. And uh, they used to make the guitars buzz like nobody's business, but I'm not playing there anymore. So it's no big deal. In the room here, it still does buzz a little bit. So that's about the only small trade-off over conventional humbuckers. But tonally, I think you get a lot out of this because not only can you run a lot of gain with these pickups and it handles it no problems at all. If you turn down, it almost sounds like you're back on a clean channel of an amplifier. And I'm gonna show you that in this video as well. This guitar just feels so good for what I like. The big fat 50s neck is just a, a pleasure to play. You can get all the way up to the end of the fretboard, no problems there at all. All the pots and switches feel great. I love the fact that it also doesn't have one of those tunematic bridges. I know some people will like those bridges and that's fine but this just looks cool and it really suits the vibe. I didn't notice that until a little bit after seeing it. I was like, oh yeah, there's no tunematic bridge. I'm like, thankfully, because I've had problems with those in the past on a lot of, lot of other guitars with them buzzing and doing weird things. So in terms of uh, what I like, this just ticks all the boxes there. You can adjust the intonation just by actually using an Allen key and moving this part back and forward to adjust the intonation. It might not be as precise as you know, your conventional tunematic bridge, but you'll, it's been fine and the intonation has no problems at all. So this guitar was on loan from Sky Music. I borrowed this and the SG, and I played the SG first, and I thought, you know, it's a nice guitar, but it's not really for me. I then opened the box and saw this, and I went, man, this is pretty nice. <laughs> I then picked it up and I went, oh, it's so light. Like, what's going on with this? And as you can see from the body, it's quite a bit thinner than a conventional Les Paul. So yeah, you got that working for you as well. If you like lighter guitars, this is definitely a great choice. And then I heard it and I went, wow, this sounds really good and it plays great. You know what? I haven't even changed the strings. I haven't done anything to the setup. It's just straight out of the box and it's playing great. I should really change these strings, but it feels pretty good. I think they're tens and they actually feel pretty good in the hand. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of the tones clean and dirty. And if you wanna find out more about this, I'll leave some links in the description below. 
It's a really great guitar, and that's the back right there. So uh, I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. Today I'm plugged into my Marshall. We're going to be running it on 20 watt mode. Now my DSL 40 has an Eminence Texas heat speaker in there instead of the stock one, so it sounds a little bit different, but man, what a tone. And it works really well with this guitar, which you're about to hear. I also have the amplifier mic'd up with an E906 from Sennheiser and also an SM57. Now I've got the same exact lead tone dialed in that you heard in the intro track, but I'm going to show you how dynamic these pickups are by starting with the volume controls down. So this is bridge pickup with the volume control down. Now that's with the volume down, take a listen to with it up. Very, very dynamic. It can go from that rip and lead tone all the way almost back to dead clean, just depending on how you have the volume control set. Let's try neck pickup. Now, same thing with the neck pickup, you turn the volume control down. Now this neck pickup is a little bit darker in its tonality compared to other P90s from Gibson that I've had a chance to try. So it does have that sort of dark vibe about it, but it sounds really cool, especially in the context of a live mix. It never really gets shrill or trebly or anything like that. So I like that. Over to both pickups with the neck pickup down just a hair. This is one of my favorite settings on the actual guitar. Here we go. Over to some clean tones now, starting with the neck pickup. Here we go. Beautiful, nice, clean tones. If you're a jazz player, you, and I'm not, <laughs> you definitely get some sounds out of it. Over to both pickups with both volumes all the way up. Something really special about both pickups on this guitar. It still has all the bite in the world, but it just sounds unreal. Beautiful. And over to bridge.
lastly, over to the ultra gain channel and the amplifier. So this is a higher gain channel than what you heard at the start. Here we go. It's so dynamic, that's basically dead clean. Back up. Over to both pickups with neck down. And over to neck. I'm not going to go deaf doing that, but man, it can take off if you want it to. That's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Shane. Please let me know what you think of the tones of this. In the video, I would have loved to have run my amp on 40 watt mode because you just get that extra bit of oomph. But after listening back to the tracks, I'm pretty happy with the sound that I was getting on the recording. So let me know what you think. I don't do any post processing other than mix the volume of the microphones to somewhere that works well for the mix. But yeah, overall, man, I, I love this guitar. I could see myself having this for a very long time. And it's sort of like my go-to Les Paul. Now, I had a lot of people ask me, have I sold the Tokai? Have I changed my mind? You know what? I think I have changed my mind on the Tokai Love Rock, which is their Les Paul with the humbuckers. I think I'm gonna keep that, but the 335 is still gonna go if I find, find a buyer. So yeah, as of right now though, this is my go-to. It is so much lighter than my Tokai. I love the tones of it, even at the expense of a little bit of buzz. I think it sounds great. And I've played this live a number of times now. And what can I tell you? The, the tones were big, fat and round, but it still had lots of bite. A lot of people said that were there at the gig that this was my best tone that they've heard me with any guitar, which is kind of one of those in the moment kind of things. I don't know about that, but it definitely is cool. And uh, yeah, once you can get your amp up to a point that's uh, absolutely rocking for a lead tone, you can turn down, it cleans up beautifully. And I think that's, inherent of a great P90 guitar. So if you find a P90 guitar that you love, crank up the drive on the amp, turn the volume of the guitar down, it should clean up beautifully. But yeah, overall, I really think Gibson are kicking goals with the uh, quality control, as well as all the other stuff that they've got going on with these. The, you get a great case, you get a strap, you get a tool to adjust the guitar, and it's right up there with my Flying V. So I now have two Gibsons, I can't believe it. You know, I've avoided Gibsons for quite some time, because I've never really been that satisfied with how they felt to play and you know some of the QC issues that a lot of people were having kind of put me off even looking at them but I can tell you man these 2020 2019s as well just beautiful guitars so definitely give them a look if you like this I'll leave some links below you can check it out and yeah this is my no regrets guitar as of right now anyway no I'm good I, I love this thing so thanks for watching catch you soon see ya